guys, welcome back to Queen G's Recipes and today I'm going to be showing you a cookie recipe that I really enjoy and a type of cookie that I really love which is oatmeal raisin cookies. This is the time of year where we bake a lot of cookies and bars and cakes. So I wanted to show you my take on the oatmeal raisin cookies. So let's go over the ingredients. What we have here is one and two thirds a cup of flour. Inside of the flour, I also added one teaspoon of baking soda, one eighth a teaspoon of salt as well. Here, under the white sugar, I also have half a cup of brown sugar and I have one cup of white sugar. Here I have two tablespoons of golden corn syrup. If you have light corn syrup, use it as well, doesn't matter. Or you can even use some honey, it's totally up to you. Here I have one cup of melted butter. Now it was melting on my stove top, so it kind of melted a little too far, but that's fine, it's no problem. And here I have one and a quarter cup of Thompson raisins. Any raisins of your choice will do. I have two whole eggs in here, and I also have two cups of oats. Here we have one teaspoon of vanilla extract that we'll be adding in, and I'm going to be using my standing mixer for this recipe. So uh, you can do it with a bowl and a spatula or wooden spoon, that's fine as well, but to me I just find it easier and it is easier for you guys to see as well. So let's move on. Using a standing mixer, and you wanna make sure that you have your paddle attachment attached here and we will now add in our sugars. our butter. Do make sure your butter is at room temperature. Okay, we're also going to add in our vanilla. You know I love vanilla so a little extra doesn't hurt anyone. And now we are going to mix this just until it becomes a creamy mixture. along the sides if you need to as you go along. Now we're going to add in our two eggs. And we're gonna mix this again for another uh, 30 to 40 seconds until well incorporated and creamy. That's incorporated. We're going to add in our corn syrup. Now, just a little tip, I've told you guys this before, but I'll tell you again. Um, when you're placing sticky uh, ingredients like corn syrup or honey into a measuring cup or a bowl, just spray it with a little bit of nonstick spray, and once you pour it out, none of it will get stuck to your uh, measuring cup or bowl that you're using. So now we'll give this another little mix, just for about 10 seconds or so. Okay, so now we'll add in our flour and on low speed, we'll mix this together, our flour, baking soda, and salt. And now into this, our oats. And give it another little mix for about 15 seconds or so. And lastly, our raisins. If you want to add chocolate chips to this as well, you can do so, but I like mine just the way they are like this. Okay, so just for a few seconds, you want to mix in the uh, raisins, and uh, then I'm just cleaning off my paddle attachment here, making sure all the dough comes off. And now you want to prepare um, two baking sheets, either with some nonstick spray or some parchment paper and we're ready to start baking them. Okay, so I like to make my cookies all the same size and a nice generous size cookie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my ice cream scoop and place them on my prepared baking sheet. Now you need to leave a few inches apart because they definitely are going to expand in the oven. 
and make sure that you have your oven preheated to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I'm gonna continue preparing my other pans and we're ready to place them into the oven for about 14 to 16 minutes. Okay guys, so my cookies, my giant oatmeal cookies, were in the oven for exactly 12 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you need to make sure if you do make the large size that you do leave three inches apart because I did and I still had a little bit of connecting on some of my cookies, but it's totally fine and still edible and beautiful. And I also made a batch of a smaller, uh, smaller cookies. I use my smaller ice cream scoop and I'll show you what those ones look like as soon as they're done as well because they're still in the oven now. Okay, so also you need to make sure that you allow your cookies to cool on your pan for at least five to seven minutes because if you try removing them now, they will all break apart and that goes for any cookie. So now I'm gonna let them cool off on the pan for about seven minutes and then I'll remove them. Okay guys, and here are my smaller, actually regular size um, oatmeal raisin cookies. They were in the oven for exactly nine minutes. Now you need to make sure that you don't overbake or underbake. If you do overbake, they will become very crispy, unless that's your preference, um, fine. But if not, then you need to make sure that they're at the right temperature and in there for the right amount of time. When you start to notice the golden edges around the cookies, you know that that they are done. Now, as I said, for the bigger cookies, it takes about 12 minutes and it does vary from stove to uh, from oven to oven, but just keep an eye on it and then uh, go from there. Okay guys, so here you have it, our thin and chewy oatmeal raisin cookies. Now, most definitely you can make this dough and refrigerate it. You can make it the night before, just as long as you cover it with some plastic wrap and place it in your fridge, you'll be fine. And very simple, very easy to make, perfect for this time of year. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so you can view my future videos. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. And that's it. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.